Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now on question number eight from this specimen paper from the Cambridge CAIE 9709 syllabus. This is for the pure mathematics paper one. And this question here is about differentiation, um, part A. Basically, we're given this curve with the equation y equals 12 over 3 minus 2x, and we got to first find dy dx. We have to differentiate this expression. Now, to differentiate this, we have to prepare it for differentiation, and we have to write this such that this, um, exp this, this uh, expression here with the 3 minus 2x should be written in the numerator. So what we can do is you can think of this as this is the same as 12 over 3 minus 2x to the power of 1. And if you want to write this in the numerator, it's going to be 12 times 3 minus 2x to the power of negative 1. Okay, so we have this now, and it's now ready for us to differentiate. Okay, if there was an x term on top, we would not be able to do this. We'd have to use another method um, called um, the quotient rule. But as um, on the numerator, it's just a constant. There's no x term here. We can rewrite it in this form. And we can differentiate this using what's called the chain rule. Okay, now the chain rule is basically when you think about what is the main function here, which is basically something raised to a power. So it's 3 minus 2x to the power of minus 1. Now how do we differentiate something which is raised to a power like this? Well, we multiply by the power, so you have to multiply the 12 by minus 1, so you're going to get minus 12. Minus 1 times 12 is minus 12. And this stays as it is for, for now. And then we take one from the power. We subtract one from the power. This becomes the power of negative two. And then what we have to always do is we have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So you multiply by the differential of three minus two x. Well, if you differentiate three minus two x, you get negative two. So you've got to multiply by negative two. So that gives us our answer. So we can say dy dx is equal to, if you multiply that, that's 24, positive 24, and this 3 minus 2x to the power of 2 to the power of negative 2 is the same as saying 3 minus 2x over, sorry, 3 minus 2x squared. So it's 24 divided by 3 minus 2x to the power of positive 2. Okay, so there's the answer to this question. We could write it as 24 times 3 minus 2x to the power of negative 2 if you want to. But this is probably a better way of writing the answer. So dy dx is 24 divided by 3 minus 2x all squared. So there's the answer. And that's part A. Now for part B. It says a point moves along this curve. As this point passes through A, the x coordinate is increasing at a rate of 0.15 units per second. And the y coordinate is increasing at a rate of 0.4 units per second. Okay. So the curve is given by um, y equals 12 over 3 minus 2x. y equals 12 over 3 minus 2x. Now we know that dy dx is equal to 24 over 3 minus 2x all squared. 24 over 3 minus 2x all squared. Right, now what they've told us in this question is that the a point moves along this curve, right? So as a point passes through A, the x coordinate is increasing at a rate of 0.25 units per second. So basically, the change of x with respect to time, not in terms of with respect to x, the change of x with respect to time, which you can say is dx dt, is 0.15. It says increasing, so it's positive. And the y coordinate is increasing at a rate of 0.4 units per second. So dy dt is going to be 0.4. Okay, so that's what this means, basically. So increasing at a rate of this units per second, okay, that's the x coordinate, that's dx dt. Now, what we do know here is we know that dy dx is equal to 24 over 3 minus 2x all squared. So to find the x coordinate of a, the possible x coordinates of a, what we can do is we can find an expression for dy dx using these two and the chain rule. So I know that dy dx would be the same as dy dt times dt dx. 
Okay, it's called related rates of change. So dy dt times dt dx will give us dy dx. The dt's cancel out. So dy dt, as we know, is 0 0.4. And dt dx is basically the reciprocal of this. So it's times 1 over 0 0.15. Because this is dx dt, dt dx would be 1 over that. So you end up with uh, 0 0.4 over 0 0.15, which is the same as saying uh, 40 over 15. Right, 40 over 15. If you um, you have to move this two spaces, that two spaces, 40 over 15. And what goes into both of these numbers? Um, five does. So 40 divided by five is eight. So it's eight over three. So we can say, therefore, that dy dx is equal to eight over three. So all we have to do now is equate that to what dy dx we found was 24 over three minus two x all squared. So what we can do is we can say 24, we know that dy dx is equal to 24 over 3 minus 2x squared. And we know also that dy dx is equal to, is equal to 8 over 3. dy dx is also equal to 8 over 3. So therefore we can equate these two. We can say uh, 24 over 3 minus 2x all squared is equal to 8 over 3. If we rearrange this, we have 3 times 24 over 8 is equal to 3 minus 2x all squared. Just cross multiplying. Now the 8 goes into 24 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. So we're left, left with 9 equals 3 minus 2x all squared. Now, 3 minus 2x, not 3x. Okay, all squared. Now we want to solve this equation. Now we know that uh, we want to find what uh, the value of x is. So I'm gonna, I can solve this easily by taking the square root of both sides because this whole bracket is squared. You could expand the brackets and then make a quadratic equation. But as this, is, this bracket is squared, we can say, let's take the positive and negative square root of 9. So if 3 minus 2x all squared equals 9, then that means 3 minus 2x can either be positive square root of 9 or negative square root of 9. So it's plus or minus 3 equals 3 minus 2x. If you rearrange this, we end up with uh, minus 3 plus or minus 3 is equal to 2x. So we can say, therefore, we can say that um, minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So we can say that 0 equals 2x. Or we can set, the, which means, therefore, that x equals 0. We have minus 3 minus 3, which is minus 6 equals 2x. Therefore, x is equal to negative 3. So those are the two x values. They only asked us to find the, the x coordinates of the point A. The possible x coordinates of a. So there's two possible x coordinates of a in this situation. One of them is x equals zero, and the other one is x equals negative three. Okay, they didn't ask us to find the y coordinates. If they did, then we would have to put those x values back into this original equation, but they didn't ask us for that. They only asked us for the possible x coordinates of a. So that completes this question, which is question number eight from the specimen paper of the 9709 Pure Mathematics P1 Cambridge. Um, A-level exam and um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from this topic of differentiation and I'll put specifically the chain rule for P1 of Cambridge can be found in the playlist in this section over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and if you want to see um, you know how to use my channel in an efficient manner Watch the video up here. I'll tell you how to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.